thanks. Oh, it's an honour to be here with all of you here in Darwin at the Rotary Club's Ladies' Long Lunch. How good is this, guys? Actually, girls. Token guys. My name is Effie, and in my life, I have been called many things. WOG, megastar, Logie Award winner, cultural icon, and modest. Okay, maybe not modest. But essentially, and more than anything, and more than all of those things combined, I know what I am. And I am woman. W-O-O-M-A-N, let's say it again. And I am here today because the sisterhood called. And ladies, I never say no to that call. I am here so yous can hear me roar. Today is a special day because it's the first day where many of yous would have seen me in person. And I know what yous are thinking, oh my God. She's even more beautiful in real life than she is on screen. And it's true. The truth is, you can't judge a book by its cover. Yes, I'm stunning on the outside, and there is no arguing with that, but it's actually what's on the inside that's even more impressive. Hello, my personality and my spirit are supermodels. No, I do not only lean on God's great work. I, myself, since birth, have been working non-stop on the behind the scenes of me, building my self-esteem. Yes, to define myself according to what I think of me, and along the way to redefine perceptions and preconceptions of others and their view on ballsy, passionate, outspoken women like me. And that's many of yous. Yes, that is the burden and the blessing of being a legend. A woman. A legendary woman. But I am not alone with this legendary status. Because in this room today, there are ladies, legends, leaders, girls, girlfriends, goddesses, mothers, miracle workers, mind readers, jugglers, juggernauts, job holders, hand holders, man holders, and soul soldiers. <laughs> My God, how good are we? Hello, there is nothing we can't do. Let me tell you, ladies, yous are both the chicken and the egg. Yes, yous are everything and everything is yous. And it is with all my heart that I am here as a fairy godmother of feminism, femininity and fabulousness to remind yous all of all that that yous are. And that's why we are here today, to plug into the female fuel that keeps us going, that sustains us and comforts us, and to be witness to the wonder women amongst us, and to the rise to the occasion that gather, gatherings such as this allow us to articulate, celebrate in order of our magnificence. We all know that this acknowledgement needs to be declared to ourselves and to each other every day by the smallest or largest of gestures. Because if we don't, who will? We chicks need to love ourselves. We need to stand up for ourselves. We need to speak up for ourselves. We need to be proud of our gender, unapologetic about our strengths, and honest about our insecurities. We need to guide and support, inspire and mentor. We need to prop and be propped. We need to show and be shown. If we dress for each other, why wouldn't we try to impress 
for each other. I know that in the days of the feminist movement, women burnt their bras. But for the record, when it comes to women and feminism, I am very pro-bra. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, we women need to be each other's bras. We need to support and cradle so we can be pert and upright. <laughs> so many of the things that I'm inspired by are represented in this room. The strength, the smarts, and the vision of capable, will, willing, and incredible women. Hello, if we can get an aeroplane in the sky, then why can't we lift women up high? Why? It's true. Well, we know why, ladies, because it serves certain genders and agendas not to. And I should preface what I'm about to say by saying that I love men physically, <laughs> even though I haven't done the deed yet. And to all my Rotary Club Hawaiian shirt-wearing men besties, you know I dig yous, but this is about us ladies today. Just as you have your club, we too have ours. I love women psychologically and spiritually, so this is in no way an anti-man thing. Actually, it's more of a pro-woman thing. We know and we see every day what women are capable of, and it is astounding and breathtaking. Every day is like running a marathon. It's incredible how much we can achieve from the mundane to the miraculous. And I have no doubt that men see that too. The truth is, us women must be intimidating to them. Of course we are. Look at us. We're powerful, able, dexterous and hot. We're tougher, we're stronger, we're more resilient. Hello, we carry and birth babies, and they can't even handle the man flu. <laughs> Forget this quiet achievers thing. That might work for BP, but that doesn't work for yous and me, ladies. We chicks need to be loud achievers, proud achievers, and we can no longer be apologetic under the radar achievers. Men don't apologise for their ambitions, and neither should we. The only time anyone should apologise in life is when they've done something wrong. And there is nothing wrong with having dreams or trying to make them come true. Maximising our own potential and living a rich and fulfilling life is a sacred privilege that this glorious free country of ours affords us. Me, I don't care about what the stocks and bonds or what the Dow is doing, because as far as I'm concerned, the only currency that doesn't drop in value and that yields the greatest return is the currency of self-worth. Ladies, the only interest rates that you should be keeping your eye on is your rate of interest in you. This is the reason that I'm here today and why I've been in your gorgeous faces and on your TV screens for the last three decades. Not because I'm stunning or perfect or buffy. And yes, I am all those things. But it's not because of those things. No, it's because of one simple thing that's bigger than all of those things. It's because I'm up myself. <laughs> I, like Donna and so many in this room here today, didn't get born with a silver spoon in my mouth. From memory, it was plastic. <laughs> and I didn't get born into the middle class or the upper class. No, I was born into the woggy working class. And I loved it. And I knew from there that the only way was up, baby. 
I knew that with those roots, as with the ones on my head, that I had the capacity, because of my attitude, my grit, my determination, and my confidence to lift myself and my beloved hairs up where they belong, where the eagles fly on a mountain high. The fame game is a game, and we all know that. And as much as I like playing that game, it is not reality. It is not the well that I psychologically hydrate myself from. It is not my spiritual community. My greatest inspiration comes from ordinary women. And when I use the word ordinary, I should be clear and to tell you exactly what that word means to me. When I say ordinary women, I mean women who are not advantaged by money or class or the influence of those with power. Instead, I mean fearless, phenomenal women who rely on their own character in order to do something incredible. Women who touch our hearts and lives every day. Nurses, teachers, hairdressers. These ordinary women do extraordinary things. They nurture, they educate, they motivate, they cut and they blow dry. <laughs> they care a lot and they do a lot. These women are our mothers, our daughters, our co-workers, our neighbours and our friends. These women come in all shapes, sizes and colours. They are young and they are old. These women are us. And in the words of Annie Lennox and Aretha Franklin, these women are sisters doing it for themselves and for us. You know these women. You are sitting next to them. You were born from them and you are them. These women give back because they too, at various points in their lives, needed to be given to. And they have reaped the benefits of a generous community that saw their potential when it's far too easy not to notice it. Those women, yous women, of which there are many, 250 of yous that are in this room here today, giving whatever you can to help those who need it right now and for those that will need it up ahead. The cause is Health Lab. And this resource is a guiding light to a better and healthier life. Because without health, we have nothing. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Greeks. Thank you, Darwin. There is much to be proud of in this gem of a frontier called Darwin, a place where fortunes can be made and where the fortunate can make a difference to those not as fortunate as themselves. A cosmopolitan, open-minded city that has its own cultural DNA and a place from where I stand that has only two negatives that I myself would struggle with to live daily if I was a Darwin resident. Firstly, and most importantly, the follicular frizz factor. <laughs> yes, the humidity. Sorry, ladies, call me shallow, but for me, that is a deal breaker. And secondly, the overly used, casual and colourful Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot cop to that. Charity or no charity, that is fashion suicide as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Luckily, your taste in keynote speakers is top shelf. <laughs> I thank you, wonderful women, for having me here today. And before I go, I'd like to say one more thing. We know it takes a village. And I thank God you chicks are my village people. <laughs> Love yous.